Sutra, hearing the verse, Fata was remorseful, and he said, "From now on, I will respect everyone." Your disciple recites the Dharma Flower Sutra, but has not yet understood its meaning. His mind often has doubts. Hi, Master, your wisdom is vast and great. Will you please explain the general meaning of the sutra for me? The master said, "Dharma penetration. The Dharma is extremely penetrating, but your mind does not penetrate it. There is basically nothing doubtful in the sutra. The doubts are in your own mind. You recite this sutra, but what do you think its teaching is?" Fata said. The student's faculties are dull and dim, since I have only recited it by rote. How could I understand its doctrine? The master said, "I cannot read, but if you take the sutra and read it once, I will explain it to you." Fata recited loudly until he came to the analogies chapter. The master said, "Stop! This sutra fundamentally is based on the principles." Underlying the causes and conditions of the Buddha's appearance in the world, one none of the analogies spoken go beyond that. What are the causes and conditions? The sutra says, "All Buddhas, the world honored ones, appear in the world for the causes and conditions of the one important matter. The one important matter is the knowledge and vision of the Buddha." Only people deluded by the external world attach themselves to monks, and deluded by their inner world, they attach themselves to emptiness. If you can live among monks and yet be separate from it, then you will be confused by neither the internal nor the external. If you awaken to this drama, in one moment your mind will open to enlightenment. The knowledge and vision of the Buddha is simply that the Buddha is enlightenment. There are four divisions: one, opening to the enlightened knowledge and vision; two, dem- demonstrate demonstrating the enlightened knowledge and vision; three, awakening to the enlightened knowledge and vision; and four, entering the enlightened knowledge and vision. If you listen to the opening and demonstrating of the drama, you can easily awaken and enter. That is the enlightened knowledge and vision, the original true nature becoming manifest. Be careful not to misinterpret the sutra by thinking that the opening, demonstrating, awakening, and entering of which it speaks. Is the Buddha's knowledge and vision, and that we have no share in it. To explain it that way would be to slander the sutra and defame the Buddha, since he is already a Buddha, perfect in knowledge and vision. What is the use of his opening to it again? You should now believe that the Buddha's knowledge and vision is simply your own mind, for there is no other Buddha. But because living beings cover their brilliance with greed and with the love of states of defilement, external conditions and inner disturbance make the slaves of them. That troubles the world honored ones who rise from samadhi and with various reapproaches and expedients, he exhorts living beings to stop and rest, not to seek outside themselves. And to make themselves the same as he is, that is called opening the knowledge and vision of the Buddha. I too am always exhorting all people to open to the knowledge and vision of the Buddha within their own minds. The minds of worldly people are deadened, confused, and deluded. They commit offenses. Their speech may be good, but their minds are evil. They are greedy, hateful, envious, given over to flattery, deceit, and arrogance. They oppress one another and harm living creatures. Thus, they open not the knowledge and vision of Buddhas, but that of living beings. If you can, with an upright mind, constantly bring forth wisdom, contemplating and illuminating. Uh, illumining, 
your own mind and if you can practice the good and refrain from evil, you yourself will open to the knowledge and vision of the Buddha. In every thought, you should open up to the knowledge and vision of the Buddha. Do not open up to the knowledge and vision of living beings. To be open to the knowledge and vision of the Buddha is transcendental. To be open to the knowledge and vision of living beings is mundane. If you exert yourself in recitation, clinging to it as a meritorious exercise, how does that make you different from a yak who loves his own tail? Commentary To be unconfused, be unattached. Do not get attached to emptiness or fall into existence. If you suddenly awaken to this drama, but your heart will open to the knowledge and vision of the Buddha. If you listen to opening and demonstrating, that is, to instruction on the principles of the sutras, you can easily wake up and understand the enlightened knowledge and vision. The Buddha's knowledge and vision is simply that of your own mind, because your mind fun fundamentally is the Buddha. What darkens your light? Thoughts of greed, create thoughts of love, greed is dirt and love defied. The impurities of greed and love cause self-seeking and make you a slave. By now you should have become enlightened, stop depending on outer conditions which only make trouble within. Without them there is no trouble, there is peace and purity. There are many varieties of external conditions, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, noses, tongues, bodies and minds, forms, sounds, smells, tastes, tangible objects and objects of the mind. And this is consciousnesses where sense organs and sense objects meet. When you seek outside yourself, your mind is not at peace. You are upset and anxious and your mind Originally, the master becomes the body's slave. The Buddhas trouble themselves to arise from samadhi just to tell you not to seek outside yourself. When you quit seeking outside, you are one with the Buddhas. You open up to their knowledge and vision and become just like them. The Devon views and delusion of ordinary people causes them to perform offensive acts while their speech may be as compassionate as the Buddha. The minds are as poisonous as a snake. Of the offenses they commit, greed, hate, and jealousy are the worst, but when they shine the light within and straighten out their own minds, they naturally are open to the knowledge and vision of the Buddha. Sutra, Fata said, if this is so, then I need only understand the meaning and need not exert myself in reciting the sutra. Isn't that correct? The master replied, What fault does the sutra have that will stop you from reciting it? Confusion and enlightenment are in you. Loss or gain comes from yourself. If your mouth recites and your mind practices, you turn the sutra but if your mouth resides and your mind does not practice, the sutra turns you. Listen to my verse. When the mind is confused, the drama flower turns it. The enlightened mind will turn the drama flower. Reciting the sutra so long without understanding has made you an enemy of its meaning. Without a thought, your recitation is right. Without thought, your recitation is wrong. With no, with and no without, you may write forever in the white of cart. Father heard this verse and wept without knowing it. At the moment the words were spoken, he achieved a great enlightenment and said to the master, Until today, I have never actually turned the Dharma flower. Instead, it has turned me. Commentary If you are confused, your recitation is of no benefit, but if you are enlightened, 
there is merit. What does this have to do with the sutra? If you recite the sutra and put it in practice as well, you are truly reciting the sutra and turning the Dharma wheel. You said the Dharma flower spinning, but if you recite the sutra with a confused mind, the reciting turns you around so that the more recitation you do, the less you understand. After more than 10 years of work, Fata was still unclear. He was a um, stranger, stranger to the sutra. Without false thought, recitation is a correct thing, but with arrogant thoughts and conceit about your merit and virtue, your recitation becomes deviant. You should pay no attention to having or not having merit and recite as if not reciting. Do not be a text and you will always write in the white ops card. The white ops card is an analogy for the one Buddha behind go. You ask, if I recite as if not reciting, then may I not recite as if reciting? If you don't recite it, you cannot understand the sutra's principles and it is not as if you were reciting it. The phrase reciting as if not reciting, not reciting as if reciting is to instruct you to be under text. But you cannot say, I'll be under text and forget about reciting the sutra. After listening to the master, Fata wept without even knowing it, but it wasn't because he had been bullied or tricked. Before he had stupidly wasted his time reciting the sutra without obtaining the slightest benefit or at the master's explanation, he was so overcome with joy that he burst into tears, just like friends or relatives do when they meet after a long separation. He cried because of his great enlightenment. Sutra Fata asked further. The Lotus Sutra says, if everyone from Shra Fakas up to the Bodhisattvas were to exalt all their thought in order to measure the Buddha's wisdom, they will could not fathom it. Now you can you cause common people merely to understand their own minds and you call that the knowledge and vision of the Buddha. Because of this I am afraid that those without superior faculties will not be able to avoid doubting and slandering the sutra. The sutra also speaks of the three cards. How do the sheep, deer and ops cards differ from the white of card. I pray the High Master will once again instruct me. The Master said, The Sutra's meaning is clear. You yourself are confused. Disciples of all three vehicles are unable to fathom the Buddha's wisdom. The fault is in their thinking and measuring. The more they think, the further away they go. From the start, the Buddha speaks for the sake of common people, not for the sake of other Buddhas. Those who chose not to believe were free to leave the assembly, not knowing that they were sitting in the white ops cart. They saw three vehicles outside the gate. What is more, the Sutra text clearly tells you there is only the one Buddha vehicle, no other vehicle. Whether two or three, and the same is true for countless expedients, for various causes and conditions, and for analogies and rhetoric. All these dramas are for the sake of the one Buddha Vihaiko. Commentary The Lotus Sutra says If the world were filled with those like Sariputra, exhausting their thought to measure, to the Buddha's wisdom. They couldn't fathom it. Fata questioned the master. Shariputra was the wisest of the Buddha's disciples. Now, if you filled the entire universe with Shariputras, they all tried to fathom the Buddha's wisdom. They wouldn't be able to do it. Great master, how can you say that when common people merely understand their own minds, they are open to the wisdom and good rules. One couldn't avoid slandering the sutra. 
Please be compassionate and tell me how the sheep and deer cuts differ from the white ox cut. The master said, the sutra is perfectly clear on this point. The Shravakas, Pratika Buddhas and Bodhisattvas cannot know the Buddha's wisdom simply because they do try to measure it. If their minds did not have such calculating thoughts, they could understand it. The Buddha's birth sutras for common people, not for other Buddhas. But if you don't believe the sutras, you can get up and walk out as you please. What is more, there is only one Buddha vehicle. There are two. There are no other vehicles. Whether two, Shravakas, Shravakas and Prateka Buddhas. Or three Shravankas, Pratika Buddha and Bodhisattvas, or any number of parables causing and conditions to an uncountable expedient but devices, all are spoken for the sake of the one Buddha Vihaiko. Sutra Why don't you wake up? The three cards are false because they are preliminary. The one vehicle is real because it is the immediate present. You are merely touched to go from the false and return to the real. Once you have returned to reside to reality, the real is also nameless. You should know that all the treasure and wealth is ultimately, ultimately your own, for your own use. Do not think further of the father nor of the sun, nor of the use. What is called maintaining the Dharma Flower Sutra, then from end to end, your hands will never let go of the scrolls. From morning to night, you will recite it unceasingly. Fata received this instruction and, overwhelmed with joy, he spoke of us. 3,000 Sutra recitations, a Tao Tzu, not one single word, before I knew what I appeared in the world, how could I stop the madness of accumulated births? She, sheep, deer, and ox provisionally set up, beginning, middle, and well set forth. Who would have thought that wearing the burning house, originally the king of Dhamma dwelt? The master said from now on you may be called the monk, mindful of the sutra. Said uh, from then, from then on, also the hint understood the profound meaning. Fata continued to recite the sutra unceasingly. Commentary Once you have returned to the real vehicle, even the real is nameless, you should discard the notion of reality. All the treasure and wealth of the Buddha Dharma is yours originally. It is the wind and light of your ball, of your homeland. Use it as you wish. But do not think these were given to me by my father. I have received them as an inheritance. You shouldn't think of the father, the son, or the use. Just use them. That's all. That is genuine recitation of the sutra from the first to the last end. Your hands, your hands will set the taste down and you will recite it from morning to night. Before I knew why the Buddha appeared in the world, said Fata, I had no way to stop the karmic process in this mad mind. But if you know that the beginning, Shravaka Vihaiko, the middle, Prateka Buddha Vihaikos, and the Mahayana Bodhisattva Vihaiko are nothing but expedient devices. They are not real. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Nobody. Why? It's just right here in the flaming house of the triple world, the realm of design, the realm of form, and the formless realm that one can cultivate, realize the Buddhahood, and be a great Dharma king. 
Yes, said the master. I see that. Do you understand? And so now you have the right to be called a sutra reciting monk. Father understood the doctrine, but he did not make the mistake some people might have and think, I understand it, so I don't have to recite it. I have reached a level where I recite and yet do not recite. Do not recite and yet recite. If this is the case, then can you eat as if not eating and not eat as if eating or still as if not stealing and not still as if stealing or even kill as if not killing and not kill as if killing can you get away with this of course not if you truly understand and are atten unattached to what you do you will not babble intellectual zen and say that you recite without reciting before you can make that claim, you must first have reached that leave of accomplishment.